spend this kind of money on a boat like this, I know, need to know that it's going to be tournament capable. Yeah. So how are you going to integrate this into the world of zero off? How does this compare to the pull of a gas engine? It is. Actually, we're already working. Like the way it's, it's rigged now, it's rigged like the old uh, perfect pass. Basically. It's really like the old perfect pass uh, system. That's in their generation before the GPS. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty simple. Like our the way that we're rigged right now, we our the GPS. Uh, we're not having any enough plug in our controller to get another extra one for the GPS. So we're back at in here. Six, I guess, before Zero Off and uh, came out. So this is where we are now. But given that this, the next one will be for sure attached to a Zero Off system. This is like just a glitch thing to put into the computer, which is so sad because when we bought the first computer, then we never thought that we went, we will go that far with that. Yeah. So uh, by pulling those guys, MD and Whitney, uh, driving it the way that it was before for them was a not really a big difference. So, you did not notice like uh, while well, this boat is like is losing speed or whatever. Uh, actually, even with me, felt that it was like a pretty strong boat as a zero off boat that she's got now. So, tournament capacity will be in the the next the, the next generation, not that one. The next one, I should say, will be for sure hooked with a GPS system. On it. it is. This one is already in. You can see the antenna is already there. Uh, we're working with the big. This split that the current craft is using now, just a matter of time. That one right now, I'm doing like 6155 RPM for 36 miles per hour skewer with two person in the boat, 10 on 1605, 1608, 1610. So it's like going back to the old one. Okay. So, what's your biggest challenge going forward? We're, we have to follow the battery uh, evolution. Like if you're telling me that within two years for sure the battery pack would be half of price and half of the size, then you're gonna see a lot of those boats on the water in two years. Then and keep in mind that would mean also that you're gonna see a lot of electric cars on the road because the, the whole thing now is because of the battery. So recharging that is a, not a big issue. You can charge that to any 50 m 220 plug existing in any marina. And all your homes are having a 220 plug for your your dryer and all that, but it's a matter of you know, how long am I going to be able to be on the wall. Right now we're at four scale. It would be like, an, uh, I'm, I'm seriously thinking, like I've seen what they're coming out with the battery pack now, and we get to that eight scale pretty fast. From eight to 20, then that would be another scale. Yeah. This, this is really where... I so it's not going to be for a ski school in the near future? No. but. The way that it will work is, you're gonna think about, and that's gonna be the same thing with the car business. You're gonna go, you're not gonna go plug your battery to recharge them. You're gonna go somewhere and you're gonna take out the battery and replace them with battery that are already charged. Here's how much we owe and that, yeah, how much Yeah, I've seen that, they're that. already starting to do that in Israel. That, I've so this that. is the way that's gonna be like. Means that for a ski school, you're gonna need like one boat, three power pack for doing your day, and that's it. So you're done after two hours, you're lifting up your boat, slide out, slide in, they make the other two hours, recharge those within four hours, means that after your third cycle, you're getting back in. So that means that for a ski school, we're talking about three battery pack for being able to do a day, then we're there. But you need to be able to take them out and in easily, yeah. which is an easy process with these, and which would be an harder process on a 200 because we're gonna integrate the battery in, you're not gonna see them, means that we're talking about a different story. Yeah. What's the coolest part of this thing? Driving it, <laughs> skiing behind it. Yeah. Actually, how much skiing. noise? Let him finish, let him finish. Skiing, skiing behind it is neat because there's no sound. You got the water sound and all that, but you don't have that engine sound. Uh, when Whitney was tricking, actually, she was like talking to us and totally feeling berserk by the fact there was no sound at all. Uh, driving it because I do believe that you get the same feeling that if you're pushing on the, uh, the not a gas pedal, but the uh, power pedal of a Tesla car. We are at the same level performance-wise, and uh, this is really neat for that. And afterward, it's like not having a change at all in the performance of the law. This is it's the same boat. Yeah. So, and then when you're sitting at the end, and then the boat is dying next to you, the boat is dying it's next quiet. to you. And 
he was totally was for the first time. Every time looking at the boat, I'm thinking that your engine is dead, your engine is dead. And you get used to that, so it's not the neat thing. Very cool. Yep. Okay, enough? Okay, done. Yeah, okay.